In Scotland, its government has survived a confidence vote at the Scottish Parliament. Scottish Labour's Anna Sawa tabled the motion after the collapse of the power-sharing deal between the SNP and the Scottish Greens. Uh, let's talk to uh, Benedict Spence, the political commentator who joins us now. Good to see you this morning, Benedict. Um, I mean, I have to say, it's a little bit surprising. Someone clearly came to the aid of the SNP yesterday. Who decided to do that? Uh, well, it was the Green Party, predominantly. Uh, the people who have, uh, uh, if you like, collapsed the power-sharing agreement. Um, uh, they, you know, they were the ones, obviously, the Beach House Agreement was signed in the SNP, but were very upset about uh, the removal of climate change targets and uh, other issues that they were in agreement on with the SNP. Uh, they are the ones that have decided, actually, to come to the aid of the incumbent Scottish, uh, uh, Scottish government. Uh, they said that the... Uh, motion of no confidence was chaos for chaos sake and so they were the ones that supported the SNP and gave them you know a relatively healthy uh, majority in the end um, and I suppose that all of that comes from the fact that if you are the Green Party uh, you're looking at the prospect if there were say an early election uh, for Butte House um, of potentially losing what influence you have you know the Greens have been able to strike a deal they've been able to get things uh, across the table that they wanted as part of that power sharing agreement uh, were there to be um, you know a, a fresh attempt at constructing a, a new Scottish government they might not actually find themselves with a seat at the table so I suspect that's probably what motivated that what do you think, why do you think the Labour Party pushed ahead with this motion, this no confidence vote, despite the fact that Hamza Youssef had already announced that he was going to stand down as SNP leader? What do you think they, they hoped to gain from that? Uh, because it did look as though the Greens were, were always going to side with the SNP. They described it as a, this vote was chaos for the sake of chaos. Yeah, I think... If you are the Labour Party, across the United Kingdom, where they're standing at the moment, they are in the ascendancy. There is a sort of a, I wouldn't say triumphalism, but there is a quiet confidence in Labour that there hasn't been for a very long time. I think mentally, Scotland is very important for the Labour Party. You know, it is traditional heartlands, and it collapsed uh, in the aftermath um, of Gordon Brown's government, uh, that support uh, in Scotland. I think getting Scotland back, therefore, in sort of by hook, by crook, in all shapes and forms, is very important. I also think that at Holyrood, rather than, you know, in terms of the, the more national picture at Westminster, uh, because of the relative failures of the SNP when it comes to all manner of things, be it ferry procu procurement or getting them from A to B, or be it things like literacy rates compared to England, or be it things like drug addiction, there is a sense that the wheels are beginning to fall off the SNP, that their period in government has not been particularly successful. So I think if you are the Labour Party, you want to be doing what they're doing to the, to the Tories as well, which is putting that pressure on, putting the irons to the... Uh, uh, putting their feet to the fire and saying, well, come on, if, you, if you're that confident, let's go, let's have a go at this. So, you know, that, that's the behaviour of, I think, of a much more confident opposition party. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, absolutely certain of being able to win majorities uh, north of the border or the, you know, the wipeout that is being talked about in Westminster. But nonetheless, they feel that they're in that, uh, on that direction. And that is the behaviour of a confident party, is to call for the end of the incumbent government. Um, on other matters, what are we to make? How concerned should we be, Benedict, about these um, university protests over the Gaza situation? Understandable to, to some degree. But these students now taking over university campuses, it started off in the States. It seems to have spread to a number of universities here in the UK. Mm. Um, how problematic is that, if at all? I mean, in the United States, they have a bit of a history of, of, of quite militant student activism. And I think you've already seen in certain campuses the reaction of local police forces, which has been, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't actually even say by US history standards, particularly heavy handed. Um, but as much as anything else, you know, uh, we've also seen in the United States, increasingly at a lot of these private universities, uh, the backlash has begun, uh, not so much in the form of the authorities, but in terms of uh, donors and alumni. Um, over the issue of Gaza, it's obviously, we all know that it's incredibly divisive. It can't be allowed to proliferate, though. It can't be allowed to continue. It, it cannot be the case, I'm afraid, that um, an international issue is able 
to bring the learning uh, of, of of just about anybody who's at the university who is able to bring research at a world leading university to a halt i think that you know that's very different from a democratic pro uh, protest through the street of london or manchester wherever it would be actively disrupting um the the activities of in some cases private companies but also universities people learning their access to learning that's something that can't be tolerated it needs to be nipped in the bud as i say in the united states it's got a little bit more out of hand because they have a bit more of a history of that sort of thing uh, but as we've already seen that's being uh, attempts are being made to curtail that and i suspect if you if you don't want things to escalate i would hope that it'll happen here but i also don't think we're going to have activists there isn't quite the same uh, network of activism in the uk as there is in the us Mm. But is it just before we let you go, I did want to ask you about the situation in Ireland, because there is this tension brewing, isn't there, between Rishi Sunak and the Irish Prime Minister. It's over um, migrants heading into the Republic, reportedly uh, because of Rishi Sunak's Rwanda policy working as a deterrent. Uh, there's now mm. talk of Ireland sending police to the border. And there, there's obviously uh, trouble with that, isn't there? There is, especially seeing as the UK government was informed for so long by the Irish government that any form of a hard border in the island of Ireland would be disastrous. It would, you know, cause and to the Good Friday Agreement that it would cause there to be violence. And so now to hear that actually there can be one imposed uh, because of uh, migrants coming from the UK, who uh, we were told by the rest of Europe you have to take. It's the morally upstanding thing to do. And uh, for the Irish Republic to turn around and say, oh, no, actually, we don't want to do that. It does seem a little bit rich. I mean, ultimately, I don't think that this is because the Rwanda plan is working per se i think it's because actually people like to try their luck um i think the republic of ireland you know it has a lot of the things that the uk offers it's an anglophone country you know the language is spoken by many people um around the world the issue with this is i think the irish government simply wasn't prepared for the political backlash that has been faced in the uk there has been a backlash but it's been relatively a lot less angry and a lot less vociferous than what you're currently seeing on the streets of ireland um they have not uh, had a history of of mass migration to their country for economic reasons you know it's a it's a country that exports people rather than imports them and so i think culturally it is something that a lot of irish voters a lot of ordinary irish people were not prepared for and i think that the government is really struggling to find a way of dealing with it and it needs to find somebody to blame and that ultimately it's very easy for the irish government to blame the english uh, the british government for this but a, a result of the rwanda scheme i don't think so somehow okay benedict spence thank you very much good to see you this morning